Okay, so I was reading through the latest Magpie magazine and in this Hidden Hacks article that I found something pretty interesting. Overlay file system. So let's have a look at it on my Pi 400. So from the article, Overlay file system keeps Raspberry Pi OS in a fresh state. With Overlay file system enabled, any changes you make are saved to RAM instead of storage and are lost when you reboot. This is useful for using Raspberry Pi in a public setting where you want people to be able to use the operating system without making any permanent changes to it, such as with a Raspberry Pi setup in a store. I also thought it would be very good for something like RetroPie. So it took me ages to set up my RetroPie for light gun games with the Dolphin Bar and uh, it would be good if I could make it that, that no changes could be made to the operating system. So to enable it, if we go to Start, Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, I believe this is also available in Raspberry Pi Config, I'll have a look in a second. Choose the Performance tab, Overlay File System Configure, Use Overlay. Oh I see there's also look, Write Protect Boot Partition, that's interesting, I'll leave that one for now. So let's hit OK. It takes a little time to set it up. So it's not asking for a reboot. Oh yeah, it is. If I press OK, it asks for a reboot. So let's say yes. Okay, so let's open Chromium and do a quick web search. BBC Sport. Yeah, it all looks like it's working as normal. And uh, if we try playing a bit of video, and let's click on that. Yeah, that seems to be working fine. So let's close that down and let's open a terminal and uh, let's try something like NeoFetch, sudo apt install NeoFetch. So installed normally, let's just see if it runs. Yeah, everything's working fine. So it's a 400, so it's clocked at 1.8 gigahertz by bullseye. Let's try something like uh, gparted. So sudo apt install gparted, type gparted to launch it. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Password and everything in the normal way. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's quickly install a game. Xmoto. And that's launching fine. Pick something random and play. Yeah, it's working fine. So it seemed everything at the moment, you wouldn't know that it wasn't saving anything to the SD card or SSD or whichever one you're using. Right, so let's quit out of that. Do a bit of changing to the desktop. Uh, so right click this. Panel settings, I prefer at the bottom. And I prefer to make this larger. There you go, that'll do. Close that. Let's add a few things to the bar here as well. So add remove and hit add. Let's go for temperature and add. Yeah, all that's working. And let's change the background. Can I do it this way? Let's go with trees and OK. Right, so what happens now if we restart it? So let's shut down and reboot. OK, so it's restarted. So if I launch Chrome, and you can see already that all of the desktop environment is reverted back. The taskbar's gone at the top, the temperature's missing, the size has changed, everything is reverted back to as it was. And if I look in history, there's nothing in there, so it doesn't remember anything at all. Very impressive. I plugged in a USB stick, that's why that's showing up there. And I'm going to copy a file over in a second. But first of all, I wanted to try a different desktop environment. Uh, so let's do Task Manager. Pop that here and see how much the memory changes. Uh, see if it's using any more RAM. Uh, and let's call up a terminal. And let's type in sudo apt install kde-plasma-desktop. Okay, looks like it's working. Yeah, looks like it's working as normal. CPU usage has gone up a little bit. Memory usage seems to be unaffected, which I'm surprised about, because where is all this data going? Uh, you would think, unless it just hides it from RAM somehow. Don't know what something like ZRAM or ZSWAP would do to a system like this. That would, yeah, one of them would definitely not work because it uses it within the RAM, um, but the other one uses a little partition on the, uh, the SSD drive or the SD card. <laughs> I just thought this isn't going to work because in order to do this, I would need to restart to be able to start the desktop. Okay, well I've started it now, so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to let it finish. But yeah, I'm going to have to restart, and obviously the restart is not going to work. You would have to do something that 
changes within the operating system without a restart. Okay, so it's installed all right, but clearly it's not gonna work because uh, it's the restart that's gonna mess it up. Still, the memory's pretty low. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should use my one gig Pi to see how quickly it runs out of memory. Okay, came up with a problem. Uh, broken pipe, unrecoverable fatal error. Right, I wonder if this is it, running out of storage. Yeah, no space left on device, look. So if I now try and copy over a PS2 game onto my desktop, is it gonna have run out of uh, space? I am trying to break this. Obviously, if you're using it as a, uh, a web browser installing a few basic games, you're not gonna get this issue. Oh, what have I copied? I copied a PlayStation BIOS. Um, so PS2 games, Dave Mirror, copy that, and onto the desktop. So this is a 1.4 gig file. Yeah, completed with errors. So it's definitely, it's run out of storage. Because if I try and copy this file when it's fresh, it copies over to the desktop fine. Uh, in fact, I'll show that. So let's close all this down and restart. And we'll be, and obviously you'll see that PlayStation BIOS file will be gone. Shut down. Okay, we're back in and the PlayStation BIOS file is gone. But just to show you that you can copy large files over to it, albeit maybe temporarily, uh, and not if you're not doing lots of other things. So copy and paste that. Now I'm fully aware that if I wanted to change the desktop environment, I would turn off that feature, get it to save it, then turn it back on, and then it would retain all that information. Um, but uh, I was just testing it out of interest really. And if I show uh, the task manager, it doesn't go up when it's transferring a file. And you would think it would because this would be showing the memory, but it must be somehow kept separate. So this uh, task manager is unaware of it using the extra RAM, but it definitely runs out. And it'd be worth checking Gparted, oh, of course I've uninstalled Gparted, uh, or just checking the, the amount of free space. So if I close this down, so we can see here 337.3 megabytes of a total of 1.9 gigabytes. There would be loads more free space on this on a normal system because this is a 32 gig SD card. So it's obviously doing something different with that. Right, let's give it a go with RetroPie. But this is really interesting. Uh, the fact that you could use it as a system, but then just reboot it and it all goes back to normal. Doesn't save any information. So very good for privacy. If people are logging into things, logging into accounts and things like that, and then restarting. I don't know if the, if the information can be found by someone, but it's certainly better than having just an ordinary system where people just log in and use it. Right, let's shut this down. Okay, so I've just written RetroPie to the SD card. So if I pop the SD card back in, Okay, so it shows up here. So I want the RetroPie folder. So let's open that up. And we'll drag that over to the right. And we'll open another folder. And uh, let's go to my network. And in my gaming folder, ROMs. Let's go with Mega Drive. And what we got in here, Sunset Riders. So let's copy that in to my home, Pi, RetroPi, ROMs, Mega Drive, and paste that in to so just the one game for now. Let's close all this down and I'll reboot from the SD card that's in there. Okay, so Mega Drive is showing up now, so let's just launch a game, just check that it's working. Yeah, that's working fine. So let's quit out of that. And uh, let's just change the theme so we can remember what's changed. So UI settings. And we'll just go with one of the built-in ones. And we haven't got any themes on there. So let's just configure a theme. So RetroPy setup. And so configuration. Install themes. Let's go with Magazine Madness. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back and let's see if it lets us do this without a reboot. So UI settings and theme. Yeah, magazine madness. So let's select that and go back. There you go. So you can see the magazine theme is on there. Right, so now we need to lock that in so that nobody can make any changes to it. So we hit start and we go to quit and quit emulation station. And yes, 
and we'll go sudo raspi-config. Go down to performance options, go to overlay file system, and yes, overlay file system is enabled. Would you like the boot partition to be right protect? I'm gonna say no. The boot partition is writable, so let's do finish and reboot. Okay, so it's rebooted and everything is, uh, is saved as it should be. So let's start this game. I realize I can get rid of the black border, by the way, but I'm just not bothering because I'm not keeping this system. This is just a test. Okay, so that's clearly working. So let's quit out of that. And we're gonna change the theme. Carbon 2021, so back to the, just the standard one. Okay, so now let's quit and shut down. And yes. So it's just starting up now, so let's see what happens to the theme. Yeah, it is back to the magazine theme. So this is a great thing, especially for RetroPie. If you're using this with uh, a game system that you want little kids to play around with and you don't want people meddling with it or uh, beating your high score, then you can use this system. But uh, yeah, really pressed with that. I've also got other videos showing uh, RetroPie and various different ways of setting it up if you're interested in that. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.